<clears throat> Welcome back. Day two of my vacation. Um, I got some things accomplished yesterday. Didn't want to go home empty-handed, and I uh, was able to get the combings off, which was quite a bit of work, um, just because of where the fastening screws were located. Um, so I can show you. So, port and starboard, combings are gone, and you can see the holes in the deck there. Now what I'm going to have to do with those is build them out a little bit bigger and cover them with epoxy. And we have the same thing over here on the starboard side. Now, I'm going to be removing my lazarette patches today, patch covers today, and I don't know if I'll be able to get this entire hinge off, but certainly the portion, the portion of it that attaches to the, to the hatch board. And then, I'm going back down there um, to start on removal of the Traveler. stern stanchion screws removed as possible. The boat held up pretty good last night. We've had an enormous amount of rain. And so far this uh, sort of makeshift tarp that I threw up is um, doing what I wanted it to do. So I'll put some plastic over, I've covered some of these seams with plastic. Uh, this is just a plastic drop cloth from Home Depot, um, just to channel the water off of the deck, because once I'm done removing everything, I'll need the deck dry so that I can begin to prep it for eventual resurfacing or refinishing. All right, so let's have a look down below those lazarettes. I was crawling around down there yesterday. I've got all kinds of brand new bruises. So, you probably have already noticed, I don't have a time lapse, well, at least not yet, I'm using my phone in these videos. So, that's why you're not getting a lot of shots of me actually doing, going through the motions of removing something. Uh, I mean, you don't really want to do it, it's kind of boring. Um, anyway, I'm just using a, a ratchet on this. Flathead, and uh, when I get them out, I'll uh, show you what it looks like. Okay, <sighs> um, it's been about three hours. No, uh, very tedious uh, 10 or 15 minutes, but the uh, screws are all out. This might be common sense to a lot of you know to everybody else out there, but I use um, uh, sandwich bags, Ziploc sandwich bags, to store my screws in. Uh, so this is going to get labeled. Uh, port side lazarette hatch cover. Now, no fuss, uh, screws came out pretty easily, and here's the lazarette hatch cover. Now, um, this was fiberglassed over. You can see the discoloration here between the wood. So, I'll sand it down, see if it can be saved. Um, obviously. Yeah, it's fiberglass. Just a thing. No, no. So, um, we'll sand it down and then I'll make a decision as to whether I'm going to um, keep the wood on top, try to condition and varnish it, or stain it, epoxy, and then maybe varnish. And uh, if, if I'm not happy with the way the wood looks once it's uh, sanded out, then I will consider uh, doing some strip planking on top of it. Maybe we'll see that. Uh, but that'll be another 
that'll be the subject of another episode. For now, this bad boy is off, and I can stop tripping on it. Oh, this is how it started out like, actually. That's the bottom. So, big difference, right? Okay. Okay, one other thing. I took the, uh, the lazarette um, hatch cover, uh, I unscrewed that from the hinge here, but as you can see, those aren't screws on the top lip. I'm not sure what those are. I can see them from underneath, so I have a an awl and a punch, and I'm going to see if those will pop out. They almost look like rivets. Um, but I want to get them out because that'll let me shine up this hinge here. But, uh, you know, again, as many, I want to get everything off of the deck as possible so that, you know, I'm going to invest a little bit of money in the paint, quite a bit of time and effort, and I don't want anything to crack and start to flake like it's doing on the side of my house because we were cheapskates the last time we tried to paint it. All right, that's another story, though. Looks like I'm going down. Okay, this is not as much fun as it looks. This is a very tight fit for someone of my dimensions, and the reason why I have all kinds of new bruises when I go home. Anyway, this is the only way to get down below here under the deck in order to see what needs to be removed and what kind of tools I'm gonna need in order to do it. So, let me invite you down here with me, show you what I'm talking about in terms of those, I don't know, Rivets, maybe. So, here we go. All right. Actually, I can't see them at all down here. Well, that answers that question. Um, I'm not going to be removing the stainless hinge after all. Builder. As you can see, my work is cut out for me later today. I have to those are the traveler screws and bolts. Now, what I was thinking about doing is maybe getting a, a, a mild steel like you would bar from like you would buy at Home Depot and lay that down as a backing plate. Uh, I want to seal it, of course, but that'll add some additional strength and uh, probably keep the deck flexible as well. Those cleat screws there, there, and of course, what's on port is also on starboard. So, plenty to keep me busy today. Okay, uh, I had a moment of discovery, so I can share that with you. And actually, I mean, I think, for lack of a better word, I don't know what these are. Uh, they're rivets, I think. I don't know if you can see this, but I mean, there's not much holding the other side of this hinge onto my deck. Uh, now, I don't like that. It's too easy to get ripped off, especially if you're going to do any kind of voyaging where um, it, it just, I think, it compromises the water tightness of the entire boat and the water integrity of the entire boat. If the hatches rip off, if you get rolled, and the, hat, the lazarette uh, covers rip off, all of this turns into a holding tank weighing several thousand pounds and uh, not good for buoyancy. So these have been very helpful, and I'm sure that uh, I will get far more use out of them throughout the rest of this project. I've got a bigger one, a little one, but they're fairly precise because I'm going to be removing cap rail and tow rail and I'd prefer to do it without destroying it. So this is all it took. Watch. Okay. I don't know if you can see very clearly. Uh, again, I'm, I'm working with primitive camera equipment. So try to keep your eye on this little guy right here. Turns out all I need to do is get underneath here a little bit and it pops. 
which is easy and good for me because it means I can take this home and, and get it shined up, but uh, I'm not using that when I put it back in. I will fill these holes with epoxy and make sure that a screw goes in there. Uh, the other's a better hole than, than this. All right, so here we go. Light little tap. Frustrating. The other one popped out very quickly. I'll try the thicker chisel, see if that doesn't look like a difference. on the other one must have been corroded. Much more I'm gonna try to get this out. out. Ah, there it is. So okay. Well, okay, these are those traveler bolts. Um I got one off here, it's probably off screen. This one I just got off. Uh, yeah. And it's still stuck in there pretty good. You can see the sealant. Um, problem is I oops, problem is I have Phillips head screws. That's what these are up top and I'm beginning to strip them. So the only way I was able to get these previous ones off was with a vice grip. Then again, as I turn down here, this is where you need an extra pair of hands. Somebody can tell me if it's turning up top. And uh, yeah, three sons. None of them want anything to do with the boat. All right, fellas. All right, let's see what we can do with this one. So, advice is you gotta open it up every pass you make. Tedious, tedious, tedious. I love my boat, I love my boat, I love my boat, I love my boat. Oh, come on. Yeah, see that's starting to... Alright, hang on. 